Hey guys, it's Lauren here, and today I'm with my friend Emery. Hello. And I sort of kind of met you in Thailand, not really. We saw each other from afar. From afar, and like we had each other on Facebook, that was the stupid thing. Yeah. But um, I contacted Emery about doing an interview just because I knew that she was. I thought you were in Toronto, but you're kind of passing through Toronto. Yeah, on my way to Thailand. So yeah, there you go. So she's actually headed back to Thailand, which is awesome. And I don't know, I just thought it was a good opportunity to... Um, I actually wanted to interview you because you're sort of newer to veganism. Mm -hmm. And in the summer I did an interview with my uh, brother's girlfriend, and I called it Interview with a New Vegan. And I wanted to kind of continue that series, I guess. So I asked Emery to come and, uh, yeah, I mean, you've been at it for a little while now, but well, yeah, a little bit. It's but I still thought, yeah, it would be a good. Yeah. I'm still fairly new when you think about it. It's so weird. I feel like I've been vegan like my whole life and I feel like we all are in a certain way, like deep down underneath. Yeah. But, um, to look back and be like, Oh, it's been like less than a year and a half. I'm like, no way. It's been like, feels like it's been a life forever. Yeah. I know. I can't believe I used to not I can't believe be vegan. I can't believe I ate animals. Like it's I know. so weird. I can't believe people still eat animals. I know. It makes me no too. Okay, so I know you sort of talked about it, but how long have you been vegan? It's hard to tell. Yeah. It's been I keep on saying like almost a year and a half. I guess I'm at the year and a half point. Um, it's I wish I could say like I watched Airplanes and went vegan overnight and that was it. And it's on this specific day, but it just wasn't like that. It was a long journey. Of going from pescatarian to vegetarian to dabbling into veganism, going back to pescatarian, going back to vegetarian, trying vegan again, and basically I say that I went vegan um, January 2014, but it didn't really happen that way. It was like dabbling in and out, and then I just had like a breaking point where I was like, I need to re-educate myself. I rewatched Earthlings. I rewatched like every Freely the Banana Girl video. <laughs> yeah. um, I watched Fork Silver Knives. I ordered the Trying to Study and Starch Solution online, the books to um, come to my house so I can read them. And I was like, I gotta do this. Cause I know, I had the thing at the back of my brain. I'm like, I have to do this. I can't look at a piece of cheese or a glass of milk the same anymore. Yeah. And so I think it was around um, May or June, 2014, where I was like, I'm done, I'm doing this. Yeah. And 100%. And then I asked, at any time I went to a restaurant, I asked, what's in this? Yes. Yeah. I, I didn't beat around the bush anymore. Yeah. I have a very similar like story where it was, it was a transition. And I'm, I look at people who were like, oh, I watched Earthlings and I never ate a piece of meat or animal products again. Yeah. But that's not how it happened for me. And um, so I really stress in my videos, and I think you do too, that yeah. it doesn't have to be like this extreme change overnight. It can be something yeah. that happens over time. It's possible. Like I, I like to say that you can, I think I made a video about this. You can go vegan overnight. It is really simple. It is. But being on the, on the other side of the fence, you can see it's really simple. But on the other side, which we've all been, it's, yeah, it's, it's complicated. Intimidating. But you know, you just don't eat animal products. You can yeah. physically do it. Yeah. It just, it's all the mental game that takes time. Absolutely. And like now it seems so simple to me. I'm like, oh, I just eat more rice and bananas and potatoes. It's yeah. not a big deal. But I don't at the beginning, that. yeah, you have to like retrain your brain to know what to eat. So, mm -hmm. um, so what are some of the benefits that you've experienced so far? Um, so many. I'd say the top things, I mean, obviously I didn't have like the weight loss yet. <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's <laughs> um, That's a whole long story. Yeah. Um, my main thing I'd say is that my mental clarity is like crystal clear. I had this fog over my head and my eyes and I had headaches every single day, migraines. Um, I dabbled, I had a little bit of insomnia at some point. I couldn't sleep well. Um, I was drinking alcohol, I was completely addicted to caffeine, and I was a barista, so I got free coffee, and it was just like, I think I had like six espresso shots in a day consistently, consistently for a while, know. and it kept me up late that night, and I had like, my heart was beating super fast, so yeah. I didn't sleep properly, um, and I was really depressed, I had some suicidal times, thoughts in that area, and basically just really unhappy and I think what brought me to veganism was wanting to feel better uh, mentally. And do you think that part of that mental shift is also suddenly living for a real purpose? Because that's how I feel. Exactly. It's obviously I feel better because I'm eating better but I also feel like I'm living for something that's more important than just me. Exactly. And there's a lot I of... feel better so I can focus on other things besides myself because before I couldn't even 
I, I didn't want to get out of bed. I didn't want to do anything for myself. And so how am I ever going to help other people? Right. And so my thing was, you know, we're in the winter in Canada and I always get really depressed in the winter. People say the seasonal depression dis disorder, the SAD, and I, I felt like I had that or I was told that I had that. I, I, was, like, I was always depressed in the winter. Yeah. And now I'm like, you know, it's cold, but... And it's funny because cool. that's when I found like hyperveganism in the winter. I was like, this winter I'm going to feel great. And I used to say that every year. And then I found the high carb lifestyle of freely and all that jazz. And so I was carrying my box of bananas on my li little like granny cart in the snow and I was like oh, I'm gonna feel good and I did everyone around me was like really depressed and I just like I lived in a basement at the time too and had like black mold it was a really bad situation but um is it was weird because I felt the opposite I felt like this big like beam of life light and like the fog lifted yeah and and the depression and depression lifted mm -hmm. but I was still in like like this hole which yeah. is funny yeah so yeah, mental thing. Um, my skin kind of cleared up. It's kind of gone bad again. Yeah, I just still struggle like, a little bit here. It, it clears up now and again, but like the main thing and what I tell people and what I try to tell people who are like, oh, I don't want to gain weight off of like going vegan or or raja or high carb or whatever. It's like you're gonna feel so good. Like I'm the biggest I've ever been. My skin has been the worst it's ever been, but I'm so happy and I wouldn't trade that for a hot body and. Plus, what you found is a solution for the rest of your life. Exactly. Whereas you would have been, that's why people are like, I don't want to wait a year to lose weight. And it's like, exactly. but the alternative is dieting and mm -hmm. then gaining the weight back for the rest of your life. So I'll never go back. Yeah. Do you have plans to move to Thailand in yeah. a few days? It's a, it's been like a, I want to say like a long time coming because I guess I didn't realize that I wanted to move there temporarily. I keep on saying I'm moving there, but like just to let you know, I got a six months visa. Yeah. I have no idea what I'm doing after that. I just wanted to like travel the world for a little bit. Um, but basically I went there and I went there for the Thai Food Fest um, this past summer and I just like fell in love with it. And I kind of had an inkling that I shouldn't buy a return ticket, but I was like, no, I was, I was still in that stable mentality and I was like really scared. This is for the fruit festival. Okay. The fruit festival and then I realized I want to stay longer and people were traveling and doing other things. I was like, I wanna to go too, but I didn't have enough money. So I was like I had this plan to go home, save money and move back. And that's what I did. And um I'm gonna focus my time and energy on making more videos and becoming more of an activist. I mean, you're still yeah. going to see like food stuff because that's just like part well, of the lifestyle. And honestly, I always say that like a big part of activism is showing people how to be vegan. It's not enough to say, go yeah. vegan and then be like, but I'm not going to show you what to eat. And yeah, that's exactly. why I actually think like these What I Ate Today videos are really important. Yeah. Sometimes I feel bad about it. I'm like, oh, this took like five minutes to make and I'm not putting in the energy I could into like a really educational video. But when I go back to when I first went vegan, like I started to watch your channel and other people's and I was like, Okay, I know what to eat. I have yeah. bananas for breakfast. I have I can have dates or bananas again for lunch, or I can have raw till noon. Have yeah. a, uh, some rice and stir fry. I can have baked potatoes. I can have pasta. Like if you don't know what to eat, you're kind of just gonna fall off the wagon, even if you are educated on the yeah. other cool stuff. Yeah, and I think that's what like ultimately turned me vegan was watching Freely's videos, yeah. and being like, wow, what she eats looks awesome like I could do that like it never appealed to me yeah. until I knew exactly what you could eat as a vegan <laughs> you're gonna find what works for you it's gonna be high carb it's gonna be low fat it's gonna be hopefully no oil or minimal processed food but it's like you may digest wheat better than other people maybe you yeah. want to go gluten free maybe you want to have more pasta than rice you can figure it out yeah, but it's, it's so still true. high carb vegan it's so true. Yeah. So um, you do a lot of like posts and things like that about like the ethical side of veganism. Yeah. And so you would probably call yourself an ethical vegan as well. One hundred percent. Yeah. And I think there's like this kind of idea. Like I get accused of not being an ethical vegan because I do talk more about health. Yeah. But you really don't need to be one or the other. And like in my everyday life, I am one hundred percent an ethical vegan, and you're the yeah. same way. I think right? we all are. I mean, we've seen that little, a few people kind of drift off. <laughs> Supreme banana um, into <laughs> plant based, um, and I, I still say that I'm plant based because I eat plants. I, my diet is yeah. based on plants, um, but I think we all come to that point where where we are ethical, 
And I think everyone is ethical, whether they are posting things about yeah. slaughterhouses or not. And I think we wouldn't, I think that's what keeps you vegan. Like that's exactly. what kept me vegan. Me even too. though, like if I, people say the whole desert island thing, which is not a probable, probable <laughs> situation in yeah. this day and age, but if you are in a place and you are really, really hungry, I will, I will still not eat a piece of cheese if I'm really hungry. I'll wait a bit and find some like vegan bread or something wherever exactly. I am. Exactly. And whereas because it, I have an ethical connection. Yeah. Whereas if it was just a diet, you'd be like, well, it's just this one time. Like I'll exactly. just cheat on my diet. Whereas that's why it's not a diet. It's a lifestyle. Exactly. <laughs> so true. Um, and I think now I'm even more passionate about ethics and animals than I am about health. To be yeah. honest, like. I'm high carb vegan. I like to be like that at least 90% of the time, mm -hmm. and sometimes I have vegan junk food. Oh, and gosh, it happens. Yeah. Like, Me too. Um, I'd rather people, I always say I'd rather people have a bunch of Oreos still be vegan, but I guess palm oil makes them not so vegan anymore, but you can get non palm oil Oreos. Oh, really? Uh, they're yeah. just not like technically the brand, it's just like right. chocolate cookie. Yeah. I'd rather you eat vegan french fries all day and feel like shit and not eat animals. <laughs> I know that's like mean to say, but. Okay, well, that's all the questions that I had. I don't want the video to be too long, but yeah. um, Emery told me that she's actually interviewing vegan games tomorrow. Yeah, I'm really nervous. <laughs> <laughs> so you're okay. definitely going to want to go to her channel and subscribe so that when she puts that video out, um, along with all of her other awesome videos, that uh, you know, you're there to see them. And yeah. I just want to say thank you so much for coming, making the trek. She showed up with like all of her backpacking gear and everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, so make sure that you go to her channel and subscribe and we're gonna do an interview for your channel now. Yep. Yeah, so you can watch that there as well. So that's all for today. Thanks again, Emery. Thank and uh, yeah, thanks guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.